Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wookie, and I'm back with another fake Grand Order video. Um, what are we going to be doing today? Well, I'm glad you asked, because today we're going to be talking about the next banner that should be hopefully coming up, which will be the White Day 2022 Merlin Summoning Campaign, which will be 2024 for us, because that's what it was in Japan. Uh, this came out three days after the campaign started for Lost Belt uh, number one which we are currently going through, and 10 days after the Bespectled Intellectuals. So probably sometime around 11th, uh, the 11th is when I would expect it. So let's go in and start talking about them. So, if you don't know, Merlin is a fantastic unit to start with, so I already assume that plenty of people are going to be going for him. Uh, I will try and discuss a little bit later after I go over the unit, my specific thoughts about Merlin as a unit, but for the most part, some people already have the idea if they're going to be summoning for Merlin or not, either because they're already aware of what Merlin can do, or they're just a fan of the character. That's just the way it is with the popular characters. So uh, let's start by looking at least at some of the limited time craft essence that are going to be there. It should be all the men sees for this year. So pretty, pretty good if you are um, interested in quickly grinding up the event, I guess. And they are all voiced, I should say, so that's very nice. Um, we'll go to Merlin. Merlin is a caster. He is, of course, limited, as always, as to be expected. He is one quick, three arts, one buster. His first skill is Dreamlike Charisma A. Increases party's attack for three turns. Charges party's MP gauge by 20%. The attack increase is 20% and this is on a cooldown of 5. His second skill is Illusion A. Grants party invincibility for one turn. Increases party's crit star generation rate and reduces all enemies critical attack chance. Uh, oh, sorry. Increases party's critical star generation rate for one turn and then he reduces the critical attack chance for enemies for three turns. The star rate increases 50% and the crit chance is 20% and the cooldown is 7. The third skill is Hero Creation EX. Increases one ally's buster performance for 3 turns. Uh, their HP for 3 turns and then an increase to crit damage for a single turn. The buster increase is of course 50%. The HP up is uh, 3000. Um, and the crit damage increase is 100% on a cooldown of 6. Passive skills are Territory Creation C, Item in Construction C, and Mixed Blood EX. His third skill is an Anti-Berserker Attack Damage Aptitude, which is an increase of damage against Berserkers. And his Noble Phantasm is the Rank C, uh, Anti-Unit, Garden of Avalon, the Forever Sealed Utopia. And recovers party's HP every turn for 5 turns. Charges party's MP gauge by 5% every turn for 5 turns. Uh, the HP regen is 1,000 heals at MP level 1. If you get them all the way, MP, all the way to MP level 5, that's 2,000 heals. And then the crit star generation is for every 5 turns. The green, Then you also, his overcharge effect is gained crit stars every turn for 5 turns. It's 5 at charge level 1, and if you get him all the way to the final charge level, it's 25, but that is a 500% chance. He also does have a costume that you can see here costume one and then this glasses outfit that he has as well from the new event and that's merlin um merlin is very good merlin broke the game when he originally released that's how good merlin is if you ever are wondering why certain aspects of the game exist it can all be linked back to merlin um Ever wonder why break bars are a thing? It's because Merlin existed. We used to have bosses that had like a million, 1.5 million HP and nothing else. And then Merlin came out and people were comping it super easy. Not to say that people weren't doing it beforehand, but with Merlin it made it just that stupid easy to just beat these bosses in a single turn. So they started making break, bar break bars. Um, he is what people would come to expect from a support unit that buffs a specific class because he kind of did everything and he still done that kind of does provide everything that you would expect from uh for buster 
obviously the 50% buster is pretty good. The crit damage is huge because you will be dealing a lot of damage with the crits off a buster card. Um, he also has a lot of ways to kind of help him out because a lot of the times you are going to be using berserkers with bust, like for example, Arjuna Altar. Um, an increase of HP can be the slight difference between your berserker dying and not dying. The um, ability to, it's right here, to reduce their critical attack chance is also good because there's a very, very, very good chance that your berserker will just get instantly one shot <laughs> if he gets hit by a critical. Um, the other nice thing is this is, of course, a party-wide invincibility, which up until Castoria, which Castoria has a new version of this, which is much better, but back in the day, and still in a lot of challenge fights that you can do right now, this can come in extremely clutch, but even if you just use it for the next turn, you still will get the critical attack chance reduction for the additional two turns that you aren't taking damage. And then also, you get a little bit more crit star generation rate, which is also very nice. This is maybe his own bare bone skill, but you have to also look at it in another way. This charge of 20% at least always comes regardless if, it's, regardless if it's level 1 or it's level 10. The thing that matters most here is while the party attack is nice, you really get this thing to level 10 just to get this on a cooldown of 5. So yeah, I think when you look at Merlin in a vacuum, there's almost no denying how good he is. And then let's talk about the larger game as a whole. In terms of the larger game as a whole, Merlin has slightly fallen off. And this is funny because even if you consider his fall off, which I'm trying going to be trying to be very specific with my words, because even Merlin falling off is still better than a vast majority of units in the game. He's just not the guy that he used to be back when the game launched. And to be fair, very few units can be like that. Um, you could start to see a little bit of cracks in the armor when Scotty released, and Scotty was able to give 50% um, 50 to NP. The one biggest falling out of Merlin is the fact that he only gives 20%. So it means that a lot of the times in those early builds, not all the time, uh, because it was definitely possible to win with double Merlin, but you would also use someone who maybe had a little bit easier way of getting their MP up, where you used a craft essence to kind of help you out with that part of it. Um, because you have to remember, he's only giving 20%. Now, he does give it to the whole party, but it's still 20% is still only 20%. Um, and then Scotty came out and she was able to give 50% and have um, this ability to her too. And you could start making the argument of like, well, she has that ability and that's really crazy. But at the same time, you would still look at Merlin and go like, but he still offers so much more. He's still giving that crit damage. Like you'll still be able to do so much with Buster with the setup that you have here. And then Castoria came out and then Castoria was the actual just blowing off the doors. And she made it so that there was no denying that Buster was in maybe a very bad position. Um... Just because Merlin wasn't enough anymore, because now Arts had this fancy new unit that did basically everything for him. And to be fair, Castori was so good, it also immediately <laughs> outshined Scotty as well. Both of them were kind of in the doghouse afterwards after. Um, and then the thing that happened after that is that, well, it's like, well, Buster needs a lot of help. How are they going to help Buster? And then the Buster support came in, and his name was Oberon, and then his... <laughs> And then what Oberon did was have a special built-in ability that said specifically, fuck Merlin, and fuck you for even thinking of using Merlin, your buster support, with this new brand new buster support. And then they released Vich, who is a more offensive-based buster, which is different from Merlin. So even if you had Vich, Merlin still has a point to be used because he's more defense-based and he's a little bit easier to use in challenge quest as opposed to... Vich, because Vichy offers you zero defense, you will die using Vich. <laughs> There's no denying that you will die. Um, but in terms of farming and stuff like that, Vich is amazing. Um, so yeah, we get into this situation where Merlin's in a very weird place. I feel like he's still a fantastic unit and is definitely worth going for. Is he top drop everything? I don't think he is anymore. Um... I've also seen some people kind of say like, well, does he need a buff? Does he need to return to that? And I would still say not really. Um, 
the one thing you probably could buff from Merlin is either this skill right here or this skill. That's my guess anyway. His Noble Phantasm, funny enough, back when he was first debuting, this is what we had as an NPC. And they removed this from him because he used to be able to give them HP heals for five turns. And that was removed because he was deemed too powerful. <laughs> so we had to remove it. And now I think you could give him this and there would be no problem. <laughs> no problem whatsoever. Um, it would still make him very good. So I think Merlin's in a weird position because I can understand the frustration from a lot of people who want Merlin to kind of return to what he once was. But I feel that as long as Oberon is Oberon, you're never going to be able to get him into the topmost teams. Like, you're going to be able to still do plenty of good with him. But whenever someone, whenever there's a next, like, Vich like raid quest, <laughs> whenever there's a big fight and they say, like, you know what would be really good for this raid? Oberon. Unfortunately, Merlin has to immediately be left out of the conversation, or you have to find another kind of team build to go with him. That said, that doesn't mean that there's not ways to not use him. There's plenty of ways to use him. <laughs> He's still very good, and that's why it's very weird for me to talk about this unit, because it feels like no matter what I do, it's, an, it's a lose-lose situation. Either I don't mention his faults enough, and enough people go like, hey, you're not bringing up that Merlin has these clear glaring flaws, or if I shit on him too much, <laughs> then people come out and say like, yo, I think you're just completely wrong here, man. I think you are underestimating Merlin, and it's like, I'm, I'm really, I'm really not. I'm just trying to, he's in a weird place. If there are, is an S tier for supports, he's like A+. Plus. He's like, it, which is funny because he made the S tier. He made the S tier what it was. Him, well, to be fair, I guess Waver technically made it when he was the first one. And, um... But still, Merlin is what defined it and is kind of is this t cornerstone of the game that is super loved by a lot of people in the community. So I understand where they're coming from with the idea of wanting to buff him and wanting him to be better is that they want him similar to Saber. People want Saber to be one of the best Saber units in the game, not because it's like, oh, we want to have this year one servant be the best, but it's because she's Saber and she deserves to be the, one of the best units in the game. It's a much harder conversation to have, and it's maybe one of the funniest conversations to have over a gacha game. Because I realize it's a, the antithesis to a lot of other ways people see views of buffs for other characters. Other characters get buffs because they need them. In Fago, it feels a lot of the time characters get buffs not because they need them, but because they are well liked. Um, like for example, Berserker Musashi. Even though she had fallen off the wayside because they had released a lot of good other AoE arts units, there's no denying that she was still better than a lot of other Berserkers, and she still got a buff before any of them. You kind of see the philosophy behind it, is that people, they would much rather they buff a character people like, and it unfortunately leaves a lot of other characters off the wayside, and that makes me feel a little bit bad for a lot of those people, because I am a fan of a lot of those type of units, so it's weird. Anyway, that full big old rant thing done. Should you summon for Merlin? I think if you're someone who's looking to build a buster type box, I think Merlin's actually a very good unit to have. I kind of want Merlin, even though I went years without ever using Merlin and saying like, hey, I don't want to use Merlin, screw Merlin. Now I have a full buster based team because I heavy invested into Vich and I invested into Oberon and those are really nice units, but there are times where I wish I had someone who was a little more focused on challenge quest type scenarios so I can use them with my buster units, and that's what Merlin provides. Now, funny enough, when I do feel the need of wanting to be, man, I just need a little bit more defense, what I do is that I just switch over to Castoria, and Castoria does it perfectly fine. <laughs> she really is just that kind of unit. But anyway, I digress. That's how I kind of current kind of feel about Merlin. Hopefully I was able to give out my points well enough. If you have any specific feelings towards Merlin, please let me know, just so I can know how the vast majority of other people feel about him. Like I said, I've seen all kinds of things about Merlin. There's a lot of discussion around him about what his current place in Fago is, what his place should be, should he still be one of the best in the game, or is he still perfectly fine and the thing that is bothering people isn't that Merlin is bad now, it's that Merlin isn't the best now, which is something that he was for so, such a long majority of times and stuff like that. So feel free to let me know, and if you do end up summoning, feel free to come back to the video and tell me how you did. 
some people do do that and I actually really appreciate it because I like seeing people succeed in their summons and it makes me real happy. It makes me feel happy that people are able to beat the system that way. But that's the end of the video everyone. Thank you very much for watching. Apologies if I'm maybe not in the biggest mood. Um, it's been a rough day. Uh, of course, because uh, Akira Toriyama passed away by the time I recorded this and I needed to get this video out in time because I think Merlin's going to be out. But also I realized at the beginning of this video, man, I could have probably delayed this a day. Hmm. Funny how that worked out. <laughs> but at least it gave me something to talk about and, you know, get my mind off things, I guess. But I digress. <laughs> Hopefully my the energy will be back the, the next time I have to record. You guys have a good day. Enjoy yourselves. Play Fate. Watch the stuff you like. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.